Hey, what's up, y'all? Clean Cuts the One coming back with another barber vlog. It's uh, it's uh, Monday. No school again today. It's been two weeks since I've been to Frank's, and uh, going back again today. I got several uh, appointments for uh, women's nape undercut designs, um, a couple edge ups. So we're gonna go down here to uh, Oak Ridge. I'm gonna hook up with Eli again, see what it is that I can learn. And um, hopefully I'll film one of these uh, nape undercuts for y'all to check out. So uh, yeah, take y'all along the ride. Hope y'all enjoy it. Check it out. Anything. You know what I'm Great. saying? There's nothing that I won't try. You know? Right. So yeah, I'm still looking to find out what works best for me. Like I was seeing Frank do it, and when Frank was doing it, he was doing it higher than mine, and it looked better. You know, and I was like, well, it's not what I'm used to because I'm in the south instead of the north. But now I they have. They do low takers up north mostly. Mm -hmm. they, they don't come up at, in the temple area. There's a few See, people right here. This is a high taker, so a lower taker. Right. Yeah, it almost intervenes with that line that's coming across here. Right. And then some individuals could take it even higher or more back. There's there's so many varieties. It depends on the individual how how they want it. That's the, that's the reason why I want to get these posters too, because they have several types of them. That if it's not the exact one, you just say, hey, you see how this guy got it, but it's a, a further back, and you can use that as a guide. Now, I don't know if you remember this cut from last time, but the taper is where we spent a lot of time mm -hmm. on this dude. You remember? Mm -hmm. Back here in the back of his neck. And uh, what I practiced over the last week was a lot of, uh, a lot of the attention to detail yeah. that you told me last time. The little things, every time I see a little hair sticking out, go get it instead of just going over a couple of times and if it don't go away, you know what I'm saying, just being content with that. Yeah. I'm doing it. Get in there, like right now, this line. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not, that line, this is where we struggled last time. I'm going to make that win. So, that's where I've been. And even right here, you see how the squirrel kind of makes that little line right yeah, here. Yeah, Going with that, following the, uh, the trajectory of the hair. And that's things that you're gonna find like that all the time. You're gonna find that everybody's follicles hair grow different. You have some that stick straight up, uh, some that lay down pretty good. Sometimes they'll have two crowns instead of one. Sometimes they have a crown in front, you know, cowlicking, separating. Some I see double cowlicks in the front with two crowns. Uh, and even so, like he has a sword, like a little crown type thing, but it's true.
Well, I gotta say, we got to see them pack pretty darn good. On the tape, there's definitely uh, immaculate. You target everything. Come over here in the front real quick. Oh, you got to come to the I want them to show you, um, I want them to see you show me. Yeah. And I'm just holding it down with the actual, with the actual tone. So then we're going over, you see how it has a curvature that goes this way, then we're back down again. So, when you put it down, mm -hmm. You can look at natural talent too, and then you see it afterwards. So, at this point, the skin has elasticity. So, what you want to do is, when you're shaving, you always want to pull the skin away from the direction of where you're shaving. What this is doing is opening up or stretching out the skin where it makes it a more tighter, flatter surface. So, in this case, if they do have bumps, when you do stretch it, it's going to be a lot more smoother. It's going to be a lot more settled down. And the, and the skin being tighter is going to prevent future nicks. So at this point, when he's doing it, you, you'll see that at, at times he's stretching out the skin. And he's cutting. And it's gliding. Never forgetting to apply the water because the water is going to give it that extra. Or even like the oils that you have, it's going to apply that extra lubricant that you need to have that blade glide smoothly. Still out here at Frank's Barbershop, um, did a couple um, design cuts, um, it's been fun, got a haircut, and now me and Frank are about to go get some lunch, and uh, I guess we're going to go hit Zaxby's, get some chicken, I'm hoping somebody hits me up on the inbox and uh, wants some more haircuts, but you know, we'll see how it goes. We're off to Zaxby's, going to grab some lunch at 3.40. Because when you grind, that's sometimes when you take your lunch. Being a barber, when I was growing up back in 2003, made third most money in the United States of America. You had people who would go to school for roughly 10 years to be a doctor. You had individuals who went to school for roughly 8 years to be an attorney. And then you had people who went to school for about a year and a few months and became a barber and to be a barber and make so much money in such short little time was one of the things that um, I endured more being raised in Bridgeport Connecticut and living in poverty and to the slums of it all had me a mind frame that I wanted to do something better so let me ask you this when did you graduate from barber school I graduated barber school in 2013 okay so if you had um you know we've talked about how a lot of my followers everybody uh that i look for on youtube is coming from a professional perspective everybody's already knows what they're doing they've got their niche right well me and my people we're new we're up and coming barbers we don't know a whole lot so if you had one piece of advice or one suggestion or one you could say one thing to all these people that want to know uh, that, that are looking to become a barber, what would that be? What would you say to them? I think I would sum it up in two words, quite frankly. The first one, 
you have to have ambition. You have to have a passion and a love for what you do. It's the first and foremost thing. And then alongside with that ambition, as you're going to the road to success, you're gonna have obstacles that go up and down. So I guess the second word after ambition, I would say determination. You have to be determined. You have to go for what you want and you can't stop. But you have to have that ambition and that determination. What's something that you wish you knew um, when you were in school or when you were just starting to uh, when you were just starting to get serious about being a barber? What's something that you wish you knew that you didn't know? I wish I would have done this sooner. I wish I would have known that this wasn't, you know, something hard to achieve. Uh, it does come with the sacrifices, but, you know, again, ambition and determination kicks in and, and gets you to where you need to be at. All right, so... 30 seconds say whatever you want plug talk to my people talk to my subscribers whatever you want to say 30 seconds go 30 seconds uh, to those out there who are just starting in the industry uh, stay persistent stay determined keep focus uh, never lose sight of your dream keep God first your family uh, don't get straight away by all the negativity that's gonna be there regardless um, just stay focused and, and, and keep an open from a mind don't act like you know it all. Be open to new ideas. Look at things in different angles. Uh, your boy is a freaking beast already. Uh, to those who are watching, he's uh, <laughs> he, he's doing so much in so little time. It's, it's beyond comprehension what's going on right now. If one of you guys know, well, you do know because apparently you are going to be watching this right, in the right. tube and, and right. much props for him coming by because he's also been teaching me a little something My as man. well. Thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, you guys, you, you see what I'm doing that was... If he could have said anything in 30 seconds, that was it. Um, and just pay attention. Like, I would never have found this dude if I never went to the barber shop. And this, I found this barber shop because I went to Oak Ridge because somebody referred me to another barber shop. And somebody referred me to that barber shop because I was going to barber shops in Oak Ridge and I put myself out there. So I just want you guys to see how this has been a, a progression and how it's taken place because I know most of you guys are in my exact same position. And uh, there's nothing crazy about what it is that I'm doing. Everything that's available to me is available to you. So uh, we're just going to keep the vlog going. So. All right, y'all, so I'm back at the house after that long day. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, Life of a Student Barber video log. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to keep doing those things. I know I definitely enjoyed this day. Uh, I learned a whole lot of stuff. So, if you want to continue to see the life of this student barber and you want to continue to follow my journey, I have five months left of school. Um, it's now January 11th. I'm scheduled to get out towards the end of May. There's some things that could, you know, change that winter weather stuff like that but i'm scheduled for the end of may so hit that subscribe button it's located right somewhere but yeah man i'd love to have you guys on my journey follow through with me give me any questions you've got and uh let's do this thing together until next time peace